Hello Internet and welcome to this week's edition of One Minute News from One Minute Economics, an edition with two events in the spotlight. On the one hand, we have the first round of legislative elections in France, and on the other hand, we have the United Kingdom's surprising election results. Let's start with the more straightforward event, which is the fact that over in France, the party of President Emmanuel Macron received a solid 32% of the vote. And it's quite remarkable that this party, which was barely founded 14 or so months ago, received more votes than the two huge political parties of France, the Republicans and the Socialists, received combined. And it's refreshing to see, uh, let's call him non-mainstream candidate, who fortunately is not an extremist, gain so much traction. And I believe France desperately needs a person like this, but it remains to be seen how his reforms are going to be carried out, because France has a lot of problems. It desperately needs, for example, the type of radical uh, labor reform that Macron thinks is necessary, and he now has the political backing he needs to go through with his plans. Now, of course, it remains to be seen whether or not he's going to be able to actually deliver, because there's a world of a difference between being a charismatic leader who does well in elections and actually obtaining the results you have promised. And there is bad news from France as well, the fact that 51% of the voters didn't show up. And this does make it clear that in the country, there's definitely a healthy dose of skepticism, and it's not going to be easy to turn things around. So the good news is that President Macron has all it takes politically to go through with his campaign promises. But on the other hand, there's also a lot of skepticism in France. People are disillusioned with politicians. So I would say that it's going to be an uphill battle for sure. Let's move on to a far trickier situation. And we are, of course, talking about the snap election results in the United Kingdom. Now, it's important to understand that Theresa May wanted these snap elections despite having a 17-seat majority because she hoped the electorate would give her conservatives more of a mandate, more political support, and that, of course, she could start the Brexit negotiations from a position of strength. But despite the polls initially showing that something like that would happen, reality turned out to be far more, let's say, complex because after the elections, we draw the line and notice that the conservatives don't even have the 326 seat majority needed to govern by themselves. So they're going to have to take on a partner. Therefore, it's safe to say that despite Labour and the Conservatives both receiving more votes than in 2015, primarily due to the fact that the UKIP party has collapsed, we find ourselves in a bit of a political predicament with there not being a clear mandate for anything, if we're honest with ourselves. And on the one hand, this can be considered a silver lining because it decreases the likelihood of a hard Brexit taking place and increases the likelihood of negotiations actually leading somewhere. But on the other hand, we cannot help but notice that the United Kingdom finds itself regionally divided, politically divided, generationally divided and divided from pretty much any perspective you can think of. And it's fairly safe to say that these Brexit negotiations are under this political context are probably going to be one of the top five challenges the United Kingdom has dealt with throughout its entire existence. And the ramifications, both politically and economically, can end up being downright spectacular. That's it for today, guys. Thanks a lot for tuning in to another edition of One Minute News from One Minute Economics. And as always, please like my videos, share them with others, comment, be active in the community, and of course, subscribe to One Minute Economics if you haven't by now. Also, those of you who can and want to support the channel financially as well can do so by buying my book or by donating through PayPal, Bitcoin, or Patreon. And you can find more info about that by heading over to OneMinuteEconomics.com. Thanks a lot, guys, and have an awesome week.